is Eddie Jackson Jr. And this is real true street stuff. I just want to say a couple things to y'all so y'all can really understand something about Detroit. Understand this. The civil right down to the bone, ground zero, was Detroit. And I'm going to tell you why. Look it up in your history books if you don't believe me. When they was trying to organize in L.A., they rushed the Black Panthers, and they had a hell of a shootout with the police. That was organizing in L.A. When they tried to do the same thing in Chicago, they killed Fred Hampton. My father was a Black Panther. All of what you all talk, my father know the whole story because he was a part of it, and he was fearing that they was going to take a tip on his life and try to kill him because he was fueling a lot of the money behind the black movement. Down at the black, the shrine of the black Madonna is where they would all meet a lot of them and donate money and take in money and get money for the civil rights movement. Coleman Young was a Tuskegee Airman. His lawyer, Milton Henry, was also a Tuskegee Airman. So when you look at that famous movie, Tuskegee Airman, Remember this, Coleman Young was one, and Milton Henry was one too, and those was two of the hardest fighting niggas I ever saw in my life. So they definitely should have been featured front row in the movie because they was hell of a fighters. Coleman Young and Milton Henry was both Tuskegee Airmen. So you all know your own history. You had them amongst you real heroes, real brothers who did the damn thing for us all. Our freedom was paid for with a price, and we all seem to forget that. Malcolm paid for our freedom with his life. Martin Luther King paid with his life. Mega Edwards paid with his life. All three of the M's, Mega, Mountain, and Martin, all three of them paid with their life, brother, for our freedom to get us the little further where we are now. And it is up to us to carry on and not forget it and get struggled by this Christianity movement that has only enslaved us. That's all Christianity has ever done for us. It has enslaved us. So realize this. When I say this about history in Detroit, it was all of that and a bag of chips. It was ground zero for the civil rights movement because they felt niggas in Detroit would fight to the death and strong enough you see, when Maurice Downs went out to California, they executed him, and my father was trying to tell him, man, the feds is on you. I don't know if that's a wise move. California, they wanted. They refused. You see what they did to the Black Panthers out there. They did the same thing to that brother. Killed him in his sleep. They done told you all that. They given you history. Joe Pep is history. He is one of the ones left. Black Butch is history. They survived through the whole struggle. And you all better know, your price was paid for by all of them. Eddie Jackson, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, all of your freedom fighters who had enough heart to stand up and take a chance on being killing and killed. In that day, you'd be riding down south and riding down south Say you had to take a leak or something and you pull up on the side of the highway to take a leak. It was a good chance when you walk back there to take a leak that you would see a hanging black man. It was a good chance when you walk back there to take a leak, you would see a hanging black man. That's what you would see when you stop to take a leak on the side of the road. Understand that how far we have come, but how far we got to go. Understand that how far we have come but we have so much farther to go. And if we don't stick together, I don't really see us making it. If we don't know our history, we are doomed to repeat it. How can we not make the same mistakes by being enslaved by the white man again? You haven't left slavery yet. You have no wealth. You didn't get your 40 acres in a mule. You got none of that. But everybody can sit up here and scream this self-righteous, self-righteous. Well, when is self-righteous going to ever hit the white man? It's always supposed to hit the black man. Turn the other cheek when you slap. 
when you slap the white man, he slapped back twice as hard as you slapped him. He never turns the other cheek. And that Bible is the Bible he gave you. And he don't even obey it. You obey it more than he do. And he has all the wealth. Understand that I say the Bible is nothing but a guide to be enslaved for Afro-American people. That's what I call the Bible. I like the Quran, as I have said to you all before. It's a much humbler book. Nobody takes credit for writing. Where did it come from? Can anybody out there? Here's one more question before I go. Can anybody tell me where the Quran comes from? Who wrote it? Where did it come from? What day did it first start existing? When was it discovered in America? When was the Quran discovered in America? Because no one takes credit for writing it. But everybody, me, 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 I, I, everybody wants credit for writing the Bible. King James, a slave owner. Understand that. Who wants credit for writing the Bible? They say it was wrote in stone and they smashed the stones because they really didn't want y'all to know what the real Bible said. It was in stone. Understand that. They replaced it with their literature for you to enslave you. Understand that, and any scholar knows it. It's you all who don't, who depend on these T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollars, who ain't no more going to heaven <clears throat> than a man on the moon. Perhaps there is a man on the moon. We'll find that out when we all get our judgment day. Because can't nobody make that call who going to heaven and who ain't. None of us can. I can't say they ain't going and they can't say I ain't going because they don't have the power to say it. Understand that. I know who wields all the power and it damn sure ain't Creflo, Dollar, T.D. Jake, Jesse the Planet was none of them. So y'all can run to their church and listen at that shit they sell y'all for 10% of your pay all day. And then when it's all said and done, I'd like to see all of y'all who go to all of their churches. And when the judgment day come and you don't make it, damn, I've been following this nigga and I wound up in hell. Yeah, you wound up in hell with him because that's where he at leading you. Straight to hell. Understand that when you wake up, you paid your 10% to go straight to hell, and you think you paid it to go to heaven. Oh, T.D. Jakes, this great preacher. Well, ask this. What did he say about Donald Trump and all this nonsense that's been going on? And let me ask y'all, since y'all say him and Creflo Dollar and them is so great, let me ask you this about both of them and I'm gone. What do you think they said throughout all this corona and shit going on? Nothing, because I've been here and I know what they said. Let me ask all of you. What do you think Martin and Malcolm and Megan would say throughout all what y'all see going on right now in Donald Trump? What do you think? Would they have contested him and been big enough men to stand up to him? Because they stood up to the Kennedys. Understand that we have a race of preachers and men today that only want your 10%, and please don't get that confused. God said one moment I'm gone and I'm going to leave y'all this and this in the Bible. Understand this, Mr. Blasphemy. This one is in the Bible too. Be a doer of God's word, not just a preacher. Don't just preach to the people and tell them to go do it. Be a doer of God's word. Show the people that you live by God's word just as well as you asking them to live by God's word. So God said an important statement. Be a doer of my word, not just only a preacher. When the last time you seen T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, any of them marching with you like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X did, they think they too good to march. Understand that. When have you seen T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, any of them march like Martin and Malcolm did for the rights of freedom, for the fight of freedom? They think the fight is over? Well, let me inform you, Mr. T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollar, the fight has only begun. This is real, true, street crime, red dot, red shoes on YouTube telling all of you jack leg preachers, get it right, because I'm here to tell you you're doing it wrong. Serving your congregation's grape juice and crackers is totally wrong, and you're going to find out who's right and who's wrong 
So just know that. Go on millions. You lead millions to hell. All of you follow them. Go on follow them. Then you lead them right to hell, serving them crap juice and great, great uh, uh, wine. Uh, uh, un, uh, you ain't serving them unleavened bread and wine. You serving them crackers and grape juice. And then you read to them out of the Bible the real truth, and they will still accept crack juice and grapes. You understand crackers and grape juice. You'll still accept that. And he done told you God said to commune with him wine and unleavened bread, and he'll break the rule right in front of your face, and you all accept it every Sunday. And I asked y'all all, who started them to do that? They can't even tell you who started them to disobey in the very word of God. And you think you following them to hell and they disobeying the very word of God in front of your face, giving you grape juice and crackers. Brittany Simmons Law, check her out and she will help you out. Wills, deeds, divorces, anything corporate like that. Check her out and she'll help you out. Jelani's Tasting Table, world-class chef, straight out of Baker's Culinary College. One of the finest out there. Get you one of them 420 style turkeys today. Have it your way. Regular a 420 style gelatin's tasting table. Top tier cuts 313 Super King for the weekend. Top tier cuts 313 Super King for the weekend. Coney Island Chronicles is Coney Island Tony. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all over the place. Check him out for yourself. Coney Island Chronicles is Coney Island Tony. And without a doubt, Big Boss Film, Courtney Brown Jr., just for you, scorching them over there on YouTube. Big Boss Film on YouTube, Courtney Brown Jr., just for you. And by the way, Motown Mafia Podcast is Courtney Brown Jr., too. Check it out for yourself. Courtney Brown Jr., Motown, my, Motown, there we go, Motown Mafia Podcast on Spotify. Let me go and get out of here. I guess it's time to go. Clancy Metcalf, Loud Delivery, straight out of Highland Park, Michigan. Call on the Loud Brothers. And when found a doubt, don't forget about Crime Town on Spotify, Kingpin's Kids. Ryan Gill Valley Mayor right now, the actual FBI officer bought the fat man down. And as I say to you all, why lie when the real true street crime will do? And we could never forget about Harry Belafonte. He was a hell of a freedom fighter and got blacklisted for standing up fighting for our rights. We all have to say thank you to Harry Belafonte, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Mega Edwards, Marcus Garvey, and all our heroes. We have to remember them all and say thanks because they all did their part in trying to push us a little farther. Understand that. So I just have to say that thanks to Harry Belafonte, a real freedom fighter, willing to give up his Hollywood career for freedom. Just like another one, Dick Gregory, another freedom fighter, willing to give up $3 million if he can't sit next to the big host like Johnny Carson in his day. They didn't want him to sit next to him. He said he wasn't going to do the show if he didn't. Understand that Dick Gregory, another real American black treasure that we all had amongst us, and rest in peace, all of you great black heroes, because you will never be forgotten, because you all paid a price for our freedom. And the last thing I want to say is going to the Million Man March, Brother Farrakhan gave a hell of a speech about Willie Lynch, the man who was the slave owner who trained slaves so they wouldn't be disobedient. He's the one who did all the torture to slaves. He told them, if you treat this slave better than that slave, he'll love you more. If you feed him just a little bit of steak, He'll love you. And the guy out there, you feed him grits in his hand. Hot. You understand? He was conditioning the house nigga and the field nigga. Jimmy Lynch, Willie Lynch is where that comes from. Willie Lynch, Jimmy Lynch 
is a famous comedian. And by the way, I heard Farrakhan tell one of Jimmy Lynch's jokes the other day. It was a joke that Jimmy Lynch used to talk about. He had went and got a hoe, and when she got undressed and took off the titties and all that, he jumped in the goddamn, <laughs> in the goddamn drawer with all the shit, because all the body was in the drawer, you understand? It's an old Jimmy Lynch joke, and Farrakhan told it the other day. So subscribe, share, and like, and this is just one for all of you telling you we got so much farther to go. So don't give up the fight and think we've made it anywhere because we really haven't. And where you made it, give a thanks to the one that's responsible for you making it. This is real true street crime. Why lie when the real true street crime will do? Subscribe, share, and like, and thank you all who listen at me and want to hear anything about history. Because as I said before, if you don't know your history, you do them to repeat it. So you're ready to go back to slavery, black folks? Since you don't want to know your history, you're ready to go back to slavery and them shackles and chains? You're ready to pick them shackles and chains back up? you ready for your kids to be sold away from you? Understand your history. Because if you don't know it, you're doomed to repeat it. This is real, true street crime. Eddie Jackson Jr. on YouTube, Red Dot red shoes. Subscribe, share, and like. Thank you all. And let me just give you one little one little piece of a drug story today. One day, me and my cousin Peebo, which was the party man, he came over to see me to tell me he was having a party at Arden Hall and everything. And we standing on the porch of French Row. And I look down towards Canfield, and I see Upshaw. Here they come. So I, you know, I, I my instincts was this. When I see them, it was like the start of shot. When I see them, it was like a gun went off at the track meet. Pow, take off. So I'm talking to Peebo, and he look, and I take off and jump over the front porch and run for the alley and run away from them. You understand? Because I know they finna come and harass me. So when I jump off the porch and jump off, Peebo is standing on the porch looking like, what the fuck Eddie doing? I done jumped off the goddamn porch. He's standing there by himself on the porch like, what the fuck Eddie done doing? And right at this moment, Upshaw them pull up, bam. They get out, run up. What you doing on that porch? Shake Peebo down. Now he got about $5,000 in his pocket, you understand? They so goddamn show he over there trying to catch me to buy some dope. And I done took off and left the motherfuckers dead. When I get back, people said, man, I said, I couldn't tell you, people. You wouldn't have dared to jump off the porch and run with me. I just instinct. I knew they wasn't going to do nothing to you. They ain't had nothing on you or nothing, so you're good. But the money, them motherfuckers looked at that 5,000 people had this pocket point. They were trying to figure out how to take that shit so bad they didn't know what to do. Boy, what the fuck you doing on the porch for 5000 <laughs> I came back, people said, boy, you a motherfucker. I said, I told you, that's how the motherfuckers chasing me, man. When I see the motherfuckers, it's like a shot. I'm gone. <laughs> this is real true street crime. I'm gone. Just telling y'all how the motherfuckers used to chase me every day. All day. Subscribe, share, and like. This is real true street crime. Red dot, red shoes, I'm out. Thank you all. Peace and love. <laughs>